Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Auto Sport. In today's DIY video, we're going to be showing you how to replace the oxygen sensors on a common OBD2 BMW. This would be most models from 96 and later. We'll specifically use a six cylinder M54 version. Let's take a look at some of the parts and tools involved in this job. And here we have our oxygen sensors, the Bentley repair manual, and our tools for doing this oxygen sensor replacement. Now, on this OBD2 model, we have post-cat and pre-cat oxygen sensors. In other words, two oxygen sensors behind the catalytic converters, which are our post-cats, and two oxygen sensors in front of our catalytic converters, which are our pre-cats. We'll be replacing all four on this model and using a combination of these two tools which are used with common 3 8 drive ratchets and socket sets to drive the tools and we'll use the Bentley repair manual to figure out any differences between models. Now the M54 engine we're going to be doing will be similar in all models that have the M54 six-cylinder engine. And don't forget Everything you see here, the oxygen sensors, the tools, and the Bentley repair manuals are available in our online store at bavauto.com or call our advisors at 800-535-2002 for personal assistance and guidance. The first task is to remove the plastic trim covers for the valve cover and the fuel rail assembly. We'll remove the four trim caps here using a flat blade screwdriver. Remove the securing bolts and nuts using a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. Lift the fuel rail trim cover off. Remove the oil fill cap and remove the valve cover trim. Then replace the oil fill cap. Here we have the oxygen sensor connector plugs. These are the after cat plugs and these are the pre cat sensor plugs. Pull the wiring harness from the loom clip and then pull the harness plug from the securing clip. Disconnect the harness plug by pressing the locking clip and pulling the two halves apart. Take note of which color sensor wire plugs to which harness plug. Pull the aftercat sensor harness plugs from the securing clips. Pull the two halves apart to separate them. Take note of the sensor wire colors. We'll now remove the cowl air inlet tray to fully access the sensor harnessing. This could also be done prior to removing the trim covers. Turn the quarter turn locks securing the microfilter cover. Remove the microfilter. The tray is secured by these four Torx head screws. Go ahead and remove the microfilter cover. Remove the four Torx head securing screws. Use a screwdriver to pry loose the two wiring loom clips and pull the loom up and off the clips. Pull the cowl tray up and out to remove it. Use diagonal cutters to clip any wire ties securing the sensor harnesses. You can remove the pre-cat or the after-cat sensors first. Here we'll go ahead and remove the after-cat sensors first. We access the sensors from under the vehicle. Here are the two after-cat sensors. 
The sensor wiring harnesses are secured via one or two clips up along the front of the transmission bell housing. Use a screwdriver to release the wires from the clips. Pull the harness wires down. We'll use one or both of these oxygen sensor removal tools. Both tools are designed to be used without having to cut the oxygen sensor wiring. We found that the crow's foot tool is the best fit for this particular application. Install the tool over the sensor in a position that will allow the 3 8 or half inch drive breaker bar to be used. Here we'll use a half inch drive bar and a 3 8 to half inch adapter to fit the sensor tool. Apply force to loosen the sensor. These sensors did not put up much of a fight. Beware that this is not always the case. You may need to apply the mechanical penetrant and wait a bit for it to penetrate and try again. We'll now work on the second sensor. Note that the removal tool can be used in multiple positions and with the drive tab up or down. Make sure that when you apply pressure that you'll be turning the sensor as opposed to applying side pressure to the tool and the sensor. Here you can see that we've pulled the harness wires fully down from above. If the harnesses get stuck you may have to go back up top and free them up so they can be pulled down. If the threads are too tight, a wrench or the removal tool may need to be used for the full removal. Take note of the sensor wire colors and positions. The sensors may be loose enough to turn by hand. The deep socket tool may help with this. Feed the new sensors down from above. Use a screwdriver or similar tool to help guide the sensors down and into place. Note that these two sensors have different color wiring harnesses, but the sensors and the harness lengths are actually the same. The color coding helps us assure that the Bank 1 sensor is plugged into the Bank 1 vehicle harness plug, and the same for Bank 2. We reversed the color position when installing these sensors. Therefore, we'll reverse the colors at the upper harness plugs as well. Screw the forward sensor into the threaded bung in the pipe. Be careful to keep the sensor tips clean while working with them. Tighten the sensor. We can use the open end wrench to tighten this particular sensor as it does not require as much torque as breaking an old sensor loose. Install the second sensor. We'll use the crow's foot tool to tighten this sensor. We'll use a half inch drive ratchet, 3 8 to half inch adapter, and a short 3 8 extension to turn the crow's foot tool. Securing the sensor will require that the tool be repositioned a few times while tightening. Once the sensors are tight, position the wiring harnesses and install them into the upper harness clips. Position the new AfterCat wiring harnesses and plug them into the vehicle harness plugs, taking note of the harness colors and proper vehicle plugs for each color. 
place the harnesses and plugs into the securing clips. We'll now take care of the pre-cat sensors. The pre-cat sensors are located in the tops of the two exhaust manifolds. Pull the harness wires from the clips and locating slots at the rear of the valve cover. In order to show the sensor removal more clearly, we're going to remove the secondary air pump. While this is not required for the sensor removal, it actually does give more clearance for the work. For both sensors, we'll use the deep socket sensor removal tool, a 3 8 to half inch adapter, a half inch extension, and a half inch breaker bar. Remove the sensor wires from the harness clips along the side of the valve cover. As with the aftercat sensors, pay attention to the wire colors at the harness plugs and at the sensor locations. Slip the socket over the sensor, placing the harness wire into the slot in the socket. Use the breaker bar to loosen the sensor, then use a ratchet to unscrew the sensor. Remove the rear, or bank 2, sensor in the same manner as the front, or bank 1, sensor. We'll now install the new sensors. Place the sensor into the tool. Remove the protective cap, thread the sensor into place and tighten. Install the second sensor. Place the sensor's wiring harnesses into the clips along the side of the valve cover and into the slots at the rear of the valve cover. Plug the sensor harness plugs into their respective vehicle harness plugs. Place the harnesses and plugs into the harness and plug locating clips. We can now reinstall the secondary air pump and the valve cover and fuel rail trim covers. And finally, the cowl air inlet tray assembly. At this point, the job will be complete. Okay, now that you've seen how to save quite a bit of money on the labor in replacing your oxygen sensors every 60,000 to 100,000 miles, depending on the model, and remember, check our ultimate maintenance schedule to see what your specific model requires. You can grab all of the tools and the sensors themselves in our online store at bavauto.com or call our advisors at 800 535 2002. Now, if you've liked this video, don't forget to push your like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Now, we'll go off to build another video.